Hi everyone, it's Rob here from Motobob and it's an honor to be on the Rexin channel today to show you how to install their motorcycle dash cam product, the MTC-1. Now I'll be installing it today on my own bike, my Tiger 800 XCA, which should make it nice and easy. Plenty of places to mount stuff and also plenty of space to tuck away cables. But I'll keep the instructions and advice fairly generic so that the steps will be pretty much the same for any motorcycle. Now before we get underway in earnest, let's just take a quick look at what you get inside the box. So first up, your user manual, safety guide, and your 18 month extended warranty, which you can register for online. And then here we've got the monitor, which is the hub of the whole system. And eventually we'll mount this up on the bars. Now underneath, we've got a couple of other boxes here. This one contains the GPS module. This is the power supply cable, the remote control, and lastly, a memory card. Now in the other interior box, we've got the two cameras. So you can have one forward facing and one rearward. And then you also get some sticky pads for mounting, some zip ties for tidying up the cables, and also a handlebar mount for the monitor. Now I'd thoroughly recommend you spend a decent amount of time thinking about where you're gonna place your cameras before you make any permanent moves. There is quite a lot to think about. I mean, firstly, you wanna make sure that you've got a good uninterrupted view of the road ahead. You wanna avoid getting too much spray from the wheel when you're riding in wet weather conditions. You don't want something too flexible and floppy that might vibrate and therefore ruin the footage. Of course, you don't wanna mount the camera anywhere that it might get knocked off as well by a boot when you're climbing on or by branches if you ride off road. And of course, we all like our motorcycles to look good. So you wanna find somewhere nice and neat and subtle and where the cables can be tucked away. So I'll start with the rear facing camera because I think generally it'll tend to be a little easier. You've got more flat surfaces here and hardware to mount stuff on. So I think under the plate here where the top box is mounted would be pretty ideal. It's super flat, of course. It's not too bad in terms of spray, certainly better than mounting it down by the license plate. It should be pretty rigid. And also it's about as high up as you can mount it besides putting it on top of the top box. Generally, you're gonna see more of the road behind and the traffic if you mount it as high as possible, as opposed to down on the swing arm, for example. So I've got a little alcohol wipe here just to clean this surface and make sure that we're gonna get good adhesion with the 3M strip. Then simply peel off the backing, make sure you've got it nice and square. There's a couple of screws here to make sure that it's pointing directly behind and give it a good press down. Now that looks pretty decent to me for now. There is a screw on the side here that you can loosen off to change the angle of the camera and also rotate the body in the mount to get it level. But I think I'll wait till I've installed the monitor so that we can double check now I've got the end of the camera cable loose here and ideally I wanna run it in under the seat here and then run the extension up to the bars where we'll have the monitor. So I'll take off the top box and then just loosen off a few of these bolts. And now I can just lift this plate just enough room to push that through and hopefully grab it and then now I've got this end pulled through, I can just tighten these back up. A bit specific to this bike, but you just wanna find somewhere neat to pass it into the subframe. Now, of course, we're gonna need one of these extension cables to plug in here, and that's gonna run up to the bars where it'll plug into the monitor. And again, you're just looking to make it as neat as possible. Make use of any existing zip ties or rubber bands or other accessories you've got and just keep it nice and tidy. And if you look at the base of the tank here on the Tiger 800, there's a little gap that just runs underneath and it's a great place to pass through any cables for stuff that you want to connect to the battery or run up to the bars. And so you can see it just drops down under the frame here and you can follow the main wiring harness and it'll come out just in front of the radiator. Now I am a little more limited here on the front just because there's a lot of curved surfaces, but I think just here on the front mug guard, there's a nice little spot and you can actually put a slight bend into the mount and it will sit perfectly in that sort of dished 
bit of body work. So again, just peel that back enough and then it's just about making sure you get it as straight as possible. Now next up, I've mounted the monitor up in the cockpit. And what I really like about this mounting system is that it's the standard sort of action camera mount. This particular mount that's included in the box is perfect for having the monitor central, but I've already got my phone mounted on the bars and I use it for navigation. So I wanted the monitor off to one side, but because it'll attach to basically any other action camera mount, I've been able to use one that I already had and it works perfectly. And again, when you're deciding where to place the monitor, of course you want good visibility, but also sensible cable routing. Now the next couple of modules are pretty straightforward to install. So first up, we've got the remote control and this allows you to save off clips into a protected folder so that they won't ever get overwritten. Basically, if you have an incident and you wanna make sure the clip's saved, or if you're using the cameras recreationally and you just wanna remember a certain moment. Now I've just used one of the sticky pads that was in the kit to attach it to the brake fluid reservoir here, and that should make it nice and easy to reach for a quick press. Now the kit also comes with a GPS sensor, which means you can geolocate your clips. And of course it needs to be mounted externally to ensure that it gets a decent signal. So I've stuck mine down on the side of the tray under the seat there. And again, it just looks neat down there and it allows me to run the cable with the rest under the tank. But at the same time, you're gonna get a decent signal. Now the last thing to install is the power. And this cable allows you to splice it into the existing circuit on the bike. But also you've got a USB cable included and I've actually got a USB port under the saddle on this bike and I barely ever use it. So for the sake of simplicity I've gone for that option and again I've used the extension cable to reach the monitor up at the bars but if you don't have a USB port on your bike then here's how to use the hardwire kit. It's worth adding that of course you're liable for damage to the product in your bike so if you're not happy with that then I would recommend getting it done by a professional. One of the simplest and tidiest methods is to use these fuse adapters or fuse taps which are widely available either online or from any decent automotive shop. Just make sure that you get the right type for the fuse box on your bike. Now I'm going to use this circuit tester to find a constant fuse so one that provides power regardless of whether the ignition switched on. Then I'll just crimp the fuse adapter onto the appropriate wire and connect it to the corresponding fuse making sure that I get the positive and negative terminals the right way round. You'll also need an extra fuse of equivalent or lower value to go into that second slot. Now I couldn't actually find a switched fuse on this bike under the saddle, but fortunately I'd previously run a cable to the tail light for another accessory which is switched and so I'll just use one of these T-tap connectors to splice in here. If you could find a switched fuse though, you could of course just use another fuse tap. Then you'll need to ground the final wire by attaching it to some unfinished metal and that's it. Hook up the connectors and you should now be getting power to your device. Lastly, it's just a case of making sure that everything is properly hooked up to the monitor and all the connectors are color coded, so it's super straightforward. Now all that's left to do is slot the memory card into the left-hand side of the monitor, switch the bike on, and the monitor should power up. So now that I've got it up and running, I can see what the cameras are seeing, and so it allows me to fine tune the position. I will say, remember that when you're on the bike, it's gonna sag a little, so you might need to compensate for that by angling the cameras slightly up or down. So far, I've been really impressed with this camera. It's got all the features you'd expect from a decent dash cam, continuous recording, the remote that allows you to protect certain clips, and it's also got a G-sensor built in that can trigger recordings. But I think what I like about it most compared to other dash cams I've tried is the fact that you have a monitor up on the bars, whereas some other systems just have a control box under the saddle. And so those sorts of dash cams only really become useful when you have an incident or there's something that you want to capture. Whereas this, what I really like about it is that you can use it to supplement your mirrors at all times. So you can peek at the monitor if you've got it set to mostly show the rear view camera. It's a great way to check what's behind you. All in, I'm super impressed with it. And of course, there are links to the product down in the description of this video. And so I hope you found this video useful today and many thanks for watching.